Very good. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mark Kleinhans. I'm the uh, superintendent here at Bedford, and I'm so glad that you're here. Of course, I knew this was going to happen. We were going to have one of these events on the nicest day we've had in six months. Yeah. So I really appreciate you folks being here to uh, go through this process and, and the walkthrough. Um, this is Paul Terrio. He's from Plant Moran Cressa. Paul's going to be conducting the tour um, this evening. And I am going to um, try to speak as little as possible so we can get right to the tour. And so you can see some of the issues that Plant Moran saw when uh, we were uh, doing the walkthrough and preparing for um, um, the sinking fund election and the direction that we're going to go with that. So, and Paul will speak to that here in a few minutes. But before we get started, I do want to just do a couple of other introductions. Uh, we do have some board members here. We've got Mike Smith, the board president. We've got Lisa McCagg, she's a trustee. We've got D. Ellsworth, D. Stand Up, trustee. We've got Tim Brakel. Tim is our vice president of our Board of Education. We also have um, Sandy Crane, who works in my office in marketing. And we have a, a volunteer committee that's helping get information out. And we have two co-chairs. Lisa, who you already met, is co-chair, along with Don Blaze as well, is co-chair of that committee. So I think I've got everybody covered. Oh, Mike Hardy in the back, he's uh, food service. So I do appreciate everyone coming tonight. Um, we are going to go right into the tour, and then after we're done with the tour, we're going to come back here for those that wish to. I do have some pictures that I would like to share with the group about um, what a safe entry looks like and some other things. And so we're going to do that, but we're going to wait to the end. That way that folks that just wanted to come to the tour, once we get done, you can leave if you've got other things to do or I know everybody's busy. So. Um, with that, that's the schedule. Make sure that you, um, there's information over here, news and views and the flyers. If you're um, interested, you could get that information. Also on our website, we have the information on the bond. We have actually the facility study that was done on all of the buildings, and we have the preliminary qualification application, which is the application that was uh, put together, sent to the state, the state had to bless this before we even began the process. And so that's on our website as well. This PowerPoint is also on there, and it has uh, some slides that you could look through. So um, again, I thank, thank you for being here. I'm, I'm excited that you're educating yourself. This is a major um, endeavor for our school district, and I just thank you. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Paul. Great. Uh, as Mark mentioned, I'm Paul with Plant Moran Cressa. Uh, we were engaged by the district uh, originally to uh, do a facility assessment of all the district buildings uh, as part of the sinking fund projects to kind of give a road map for the next 10 years of what would need to be done. Um, so we did that uh, last fall, um, and then that uh, report was presented to the board, and from that we were then engaged to uh, plan uh, a bond issue, which is why we're all here tonight. So. Um, well, what I really wanted to do is kind of walk you guys through the building um, just to kind of show you what we saw when we walked through. So uh, I work uh, for a company called Plant Moran Cressa. You might have heard of, may have heard of Plant Moran. Uh, they're one of the, I think, 13th largest uh, accounting and corporate services firms in the country. The uh, group that I work with, Cressa, we actually do program management. Uh, so we manage large construction projects. Uh, some of them, uh, for instance, would be like the Detroit Medical Center downtown, uh, a lot of uh, K-12 bond issues. Uh, right now we're managing Livonia Public Schools, $195 million bond. Uh, we also do um, a lot of municipal, uh, government, uh, office, industrial projects. So really we manage projects for clients like yourselves. So, um, so we came out and did that facility assessment. We were looking for you know, code issues, looking for functionality of the space. We met with a lot of different people. We met with all the different directors from uh, the athletic director, food service, technology. Um, we met with the board members. We met with PTA, PTO groups. We actually walked the buildings with uh, the building principals and with the head custodians, because obviously they're in the buildings every day. They know uh, the spaces a lot better than we do. We tried to talk to as many people as we could as we walked through, be it teachers, be it staff, students, that kind of thing. Um, so really, we tried to educate ourselves as much as possible about your buildings, how they function, their ages, their strengths, their weaknesses, that kind of thing. Um, this walkthrough tonight is, you know, in our report in general, is not a, you know, 
indictment or a judgment or at any at any level of you know what you guys have done with the facilities you have I think the district's done great uh, with the buildings they had as far as maintaining them as far as keeping them clean and orderly and functioning uh, it's really just the fact that these buildings were all built you know in the 50s early 60s uh, late 60s for some of them but they're really all 40 to 50 years old and it, it's really time to reinvest uh, in them and bring them up to current standards for a 21st century uh, learning environment so um, today we're going to start probably in this room and then uh, go to the kitchen hit some classrooms down to the athletic wing over to the performing arts center I think we might go outside too uh, we had talked about going out to the track and the stadium complex if anybody wants to head out that way since the weather's so nice which we haven't had uh, that luxury yet um, I don't know do we get a bus at all today or no yeah, there will be a bus. okay so there's probably gonna be a new bus and an old bus I think out back uh, but really we just wanted to give everyone the opportunity to walk around and kind of see what we saw and let you guys draw your own conclusions so um, and please know this Paul does bring up a good point um, you'll see when we walk out um, actually you'll see the custodians working this is their shift when the the second uh, shift that comes in, they do a great job. They work hard. They do a great job keeping this building clean. So please know that this really is more about the age of the district looking down the road um, and, and what we can do. So um, that's a very good point. Okay. So I guess uh, <clears throat> just a quick overview. Sure. Um, high school 9 through 12, about 1,500 students. Um, I think there's 73 teaching stations here. That sounds about right. This is a good portion of the bond project, this facility. And it's because, first of all, it's huge. You'll see that in the walk, walk through. I was here today walking around visiting some classrooms and burning off some calories. That's number one. But number two, it also, this part of the project includes all the sites, the athletic facilities, you know, that all the buildings that the middle school uses, not just the high school, the auditorium, which not only the whole district but the whole community uses so when you look at the amount of, of the proportion of 30 approximately 30 million dollars of the 70 million on this site please keep in mind around the high school is, is because it includes the site and includes improvements in facilities that are not just used for the high school they're used for community for all you know for the middle school students uh, all kinds of things so i think that's important to know yeah, that's a great point. Um, so I guess just starting with uh, with this room, um, obviously uh, this room's not in too bad a shape. Uh, you got some operable partitions uh, over there that are still functioning, but certainly in need of replacement. If you look at uh, some of the mechanisms and fabrics and things like that, uh, you know, ceilings and lighting are a lot of things we're looking at throughout the building. Uh, replacing, we got some older inefficient light fixtures that need to be replaced. Um, as far as the kitchen goes, we're going to go walk back through there, but you can kind of see that the serving line area, and this is pretty consistent in all the buildings, but the cafeterias aren't necessarily too small, but the serving line areas that funnel the kids through to get them their lunches and food uh, are not really laid out very well and cause a lot of problems, which causes extra lunch periods and kind of cuts down on the capacity of those spaces. So Why we didn't put a ton of dollars into actually buying devices in this, and the reason we did that is there's a reason because right now we're already paying taxes for the tech millage and those dollars are going towards buying I'm sure you followed the one-to-one -one devices that were uh, that we're implementing at, we started at six and we're going fifth seventh and they're gonna branch out so but there however in all of the buildings there's dollars to put the infrastructure so that those one-to-one -one devices can connect and we can use that um, in our teaching and learning process so New restrooms and team facilities out at the stadium, I talked about that. Main entrance, we hit that auditorium, we talked about that. Athletic, we hit kitchen, furniture, asphalt parking. Uh, we talked about the turf, track and field. And also there's a lot of money in this for lighting. And not just the lighting that we see in here, but parking lot lighting. There's, we got a, in the surveys, we surveyed a bunch of folks. They said after a football game, when you come out or after an evening event, you take your life into your own hands, especially if they turn the lights off on you. So there's parking lot lighting, there's all of those kinds of things as part of this bond. So I wanted to make sure that we, that we hit um, all of the things. Um, and then these are some other pieces. So, Paul, anything to add on that? Nope, other than all this information is uh, online on the school website. 
So if there's any questions anybody has as they're reading through it, we're more than happy to answer any and all questions. So uh, I think there's an email address on the brochure, I believe, of where you can send questions to. And then Sandy can kind of funnel them around uh, the appropriate party. So yep. we want to be as transparent uh, as possible with all of this. We want to make sure that uh, everything is accounted for and, uh, and everyone does what they say they're going to do. So Exactly. Um, now, as I promised, I want to show you some pictures of some safe entryways so you kind of get a vision in your mind. This is my old district that, um, that I used to work at. Um, it's a great small school district. Um, it's just north of Flint, Michigan. It's called, uh, it's in Montrose. The middle schools, the schools are all named after folks. This is um, pretty tricky. You're really, um, as a new superintendent, I love being here. This was a great school district, but this school district's great as well. And I want to make that clear. Um, so I put these pictures up only to show you what is possible and, and what some of the things are. This is the entryway to the middle school. And by the way, um, this was a $14 million bond project. That's not why I came here to do a bond project, believe me. There are a ton of work. This came as a result of the facility study and that showing the needs of the kids. And as the leader of this organization, this is where we're at. But uh, Plant Moran, Cressa, and Paul worked on this project as well. So some of these pictures Paul will um, certainly see. This is the entryway to the middle school. <clears throat> and of course, Paul, I'm going to have you. Yeah, I'll get that for you. If you can click on these. But I'm going to try to show what this looks like. This is walking into the front door. This building, many of the old schools were not built with the safety, with safety in mind. Very similar to out front. You could walk in this building, and I was principal of this building for 10 years before I was superintendent. The office is over here. A person could walk in the front door, turn left. These weren't here and get to all of our kids in the whole building before we in the office even knew what was going on. So what we did, or as part of our project, is we put in this safe entry. We put these doors here, these doors here. We busted a hole into the office. And now, so when school starts, you have to come in this area. And before you can get to the kids, this is locked, locked. You got to go into the office. So that's an, a sample of a safe entry. Go ahead and click to the next one. Uh, these are just pictures. The reason why I put it in here, you would be amazed. Someone asked me, you know, with these buildings being 19, you know, 64, for example, with this building, you'd be absolutely amazed what they can do with new ceiling tile, new lighting, and paint. This is the same age as, I think the middle school up there is the six, was yep. built in the 60s. Same vintage. About the same. So go ahead and click through. These are just some pictures. Go ahead and click. This is, uh, again, same thing. This is a hallway in the middle school. Keep clicking. Same thing. This is kind of a walk through kind of area. Kind of a common area, yep. Okay, this is going into our high school. Keep going. This gym, this is a high school gym, and I was talking about what can be done. It is amazing what the architects can do when they have this. This gym was built in 1960. I had a superintendent walk in here and tell me, How did you get your community to support a new gym? This gym isn't new. But I show you this because if you can imagine our gym, what can be done? Simply new lighting, new paint, new bleachers, redoing the floor, absolutely amazing what can be done with, with, um, with even that facility down there. That's why I kind of like that. But I'm glad someone mentioned the dimensions because we're going to check on that. So go ahead. That's the other side. Just keep going. This is the, we were the Rams, so we had a big M. And, but... They, even that floor, you'll see over the years, it yellows from wax. Just by taking it down, taking it all the way down, repainting, resurfacing, it's amazing how bright that facility will be. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, this is, I talked about the new entryway into the athletic area. Again, at Montrose, very similar. You had to, we actually had to walk through a girl's locker room. Of course, when we had games, we didn't use it, to get to the home side. It was just the way... Back in the 1960s, they had to walk into the gym right underneath the basket. Okay, so it's, games are at winter, it would get wet, kids would come down, layups, get crunched. So we blocked that off and we had to reroute people through. So it's not uncommon to have people in your building to get to a facility. We wanted to end all that, we wanted it to be safe. So we went to the other side, much like I would like to do here, put a safe entry on for um, our athletic 
area so that people go, they come into the area, they go into our gym, they don't go into the school, and they leave. So go ahead. And we just, we did some things. We did Hall of Fame things, um, some cool things with it, but that's, that's a piece that we can down the road. <clears throat> this was a woods. Again, I just show this stuff to what they can do these days. This was a woods. Now it's probably one of the nicest uh, girls softball fields in the area, certainly up there. Um, it's just amazing what they can do. Keep going. I show these pictures. Keep going. A couple more. You walk in our bathrooms here. This is what they're doing nowadays with bathrooms. First of all, they're all ADA, wheelchair, accessible for folks. Um, it's just amazing. A little bit of tile, you know, new plumbing, new, new lighting. <clears throat> Absolutely amazing what they can do. Keep going. And I just want to get to the high school entryway. Keep going. Uh, a couple more. Okay, right here. This is the high school office and the doors coming in are right back here. So you have to come in here to this vestibule and then come into the office area. There's another set of doors that are open when school starts, when the kids are coming in, but then those are closed shut and locked, okay? Yep. Go ahead, <clears throat> anything to add to that, Paul? Uh, just that, you know, uh, obviously with all the glass there, we look at different options, whether it's wire glass, whether it's laminated glass that can slow people down if they're in the building to do harm. Uh, there's ways to keep them in that space a little bit longer so that a panic button can be hit, 911 can be called, that kind of thing, to try to make it as safe as possible. So yep. Go ahead and click a couple more. This is just the office space. Go ahead and click, click. And I just so show this picture right here because the other question I get asked is, why don't we tear down this high school and build a new one as part of this bond? And my answer to that, first of all, to build a high school, it's about $70 million. So all of the dollars would be right here. We can't do that. But I show you this, this building, this is the high school, may be older than this building. And the reason why I show you is you'll be amazed what they can do with ceiling tile, lights, new lockers, paint. Um, it's just, it's, it's amazing. This building can and will look amazing when it is completed. So, uh, I think that's about it. Just some classrooms, and I think that's pretty much it for okay. that, so you can just close out of that. Okay, we did want to take a few minutes and open it up for questions. Um, I'm certainly not an expert. Paul's much more uh, in tune to this stuff. But if we can't answer a question, if we can get your name and number, then we can get back with you. So if you have a question, just raise your hand. Are there any questions? Okay. Any questions? That, oh, right here in front. Go ahead. You know, clearly what we've seen has been uh, a very nice vision, no two ways about it. But it bothers me to see us uh, finance six and ten year assets with a 30 year financing program. Uh, it, Good point. it strikes me that, that, uh, that that's not the best way to, to uh, okay. and that is manage great, our, our money. That is a great question. Can I repeat it so everyone can hear it? Okay, the question was um, using 30-year bond dollars to fund six-year um, useful, useful life items, and that's a very good question. I think you're referring to the buses probably, correct? The buses, the track, AstroTurf, uh, Turf, there's okay. a finishes, a lot of things. Okay, very good. Yep, so I can address that. So um, when we put the bond application together for the state, that's one of the calculations that they have us do is to go through and look at what are the five-year useful life uh, items and some of the five-year things would be like uh, computers, uh, things of that nature. Buses are about six years. Um, there's 10-year useful life items for like technology infrastructure, things like that. Uh, flooring is different than roofing is different than site work. So we actually have to go through and run a calculation on the entire bond on every dollar and figure out what is the average useful life of that bond uh, of those of those items and then run a calculation and prove to the state that the, on average that those uh, improvements are going to last longer than the 30-year term of the bond or if it was a 20-year bond or whatever it might be not only that but we also have to pay back each piece so if there's 
$2 million worth of five-year amortization items, we have to pay back those $2 million within the first five years of the bond. So not only do the bondholders want to see that, who are actually uh, loaning the money, to, and they want to make sure they're going to get paid back, so they want to make sure that that's the case, but the state requires it. It's absolutely mandatory that that, that is the case. So we did run all those numbers. I think the average uh, for the entire bond was somewhere around 37, I think, 35 or 37 years. So we did meet that requirement. That's a good point. Very good question. If I may, and I don't want to sound argumentative, no, but you know, when we start talking about averages, it's like the guy with his head in the oven and his butt in the refrigerator. On average, he's okay. Okay. Right. Um, you know, the fact is that this community is going to have to pony up whatever amount of money to replace the buses, whatever amount of money to replace the track, uh, and that, that's, that's where my concern is, that, sure. that regardless how the state sees it, the fact is someone's going to have to cough up money in between here, and we will have encumbered ourselves pretty substantially with this $70 million. Yep, you yeah, will, absolutely. Good. Um, I guess the thing I would add to that is um, we will pay for them as we go, so the buses will be paid off within six years, et cetera. The other thing is if the bond doesn't pass, right now I think the average age of the bus fleet is about 14 years old. Um, the bus, what is it? 15 years old. So whether we pay for it with bond funds or pay for it with general fund dollars, the buses need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Buses aren't going to last much longer than you guys have kept them together already. Um, you know, mechanical systems that are 50 years old plus, they have to be replaced at some point. I know no one likes higher taxes. No one necessarily wants to pay for some of those things, me included. My millage rate in my district is over seven mills, or is seven mills, so um, I don't like that necessarily either. But the only funding mechanism that the district has at their disposal is a bond issue or a sinking fund. And we started this out originally as looking at could we cover these costs with a sinking fund and found out that it was much more than the sinking fund would support, and that's why we're here today. So whether the community pays for them with a bond now or in two years or in three years or in five years, these bills are coming due, and they need to be addressed one way or another. So I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Mark. No, I think that's good, and, and that is a good point. We're cognizant of that, and, um, but certainly with the transportation pieces, probably the best example that we, you know that those, really the way that it should work, a school district should set aside dollars every two, three years, buy a couple buses so that you're trying to turn the fleet over. And so I, that is a good point. Unfortunately, the funding just isn't there yeah. from the state to do it that way. Right. So we're in the position that we are. When I do understand those situations, yeah. I was on the board back in the 80s and we oh. went through some 80s tough times. 80s was tough times, but yep. Uh, nonetheless, you know, we, we need to, the buses is a good example. Uh, we can replace the entire fleet right now, and 15 years from now, we'll be in the same situation we're in if we don't figure out better ways to manage the investments. Yeah, you're exactly right. Absolutely. Now, one of the things I, I will speak more. to that, and I certainly would sit down, um, one of the things that I brought to the district um, from my previous district was a, a budgeting tool. Not sophisticated, Excel spreadsheet took the CFO and myself about three months to complete. The, the reason why I bring that up is I certainly would share that with you and let you know that and show you at least how I view a budget. When I arrived, not that it was wrong, but the budget here in this district was 60 pages, just a ton of line items. And to me, I'm sure it worked for someone, but I just couldn't make rhyme or reason of it. So what I spent my first few months here doing was taking that budget and breaking it down by area so that I can tell you in the in uh, Jackman Elementary we have this many teachers right here's their salary right here's the FICA that we pay on that salary the retirement the health insurance we have that all broken down and the reason why I speak to that is that is a tool that this district will have and that the Board of Education I actually gave them an in-service on it I'm surprised they didn't throw me out on my ear but um, because it was kind of long and it was it was kind of boring with just dealing with the numbers but my goal really is to use that tool so that we can make better financial decisions and I'm, I'm sure you're kind of catching up we believe we say we're cautiously optimistic that we will be coming out of deficit this year and we use that because Lansing if you're a board member you know they could make one decision and we'd be sunk again but so we have to use those words but we believe that 
the decisions that have been made up to, to this point and using this tool, again, it, a lot of it depends on Lansing that uh, we can do that. It's just like I use the example of the turf. There should be dollars. In, in our current budget right now, there's $45,000 for capital projects. That doesn't even cover a, a boiler. For 750,000 square feet. Yeah. So you're right that your point, and it's well taken, that we need to, and I, um, my goal is that with this tool to do that, to be able to earmark funds and do a better job of planning and looking down the road so that we don't find ourselves in, in this situation. Again, you're right about the buses, though. Even if we, for example, if this passes, there's, there's enough for 20 buses, right? That's what, there's 20 buses plus four in this package. You probably wouldn't want to go out and buy all 20 immediately because you hit it right out. 15 years from now, you need 20 buses. So you probably would want to stagger them out. And then the idea would be that every you know, couple years, the school district invest in two or three new buses and budget it that way is probably a better way to go. So that's a very good point. But you can certainly come in and I'll show you that if you're interested and I can go through that. The, okay. the format. Okay. Great, great comments, great questions. Are there other questions? Yes. When we were walking around, you mentioned the uh, savings that would come from just the new energy efficiency windows and such. Do, have you projected those savings? Do you know? Do you have an idea of what you would save? Um, I know that, go ahead. No, we haven't yet. Um, so they do. Have we modeled the energy efficiency that we think we might save from all the new improvements? So that's a very complicated question. Um, once we hire a team of architects and engineers, they are going to have to energy model, you know, do a building model to figure out uh, the energy efficiency of the entire building from the roof insulation to the insulation that's not in the walls or hopefully <laughs> that we're going to put into the walls, new windows. Um, so that's something we're going to look at. But, you know, if you think about the fact that the code has changed a lot, mechanically speaking. So we're going to be bringing in a lot more fresh air into the classroom than the, the old units do now. So bringing in cold air in the winter that you have to heat takes more energy, costs more dollars. It also makes the classroom environment a heck of a lot better if you're a kid who's sitting there falling asleep because there's no fresh air in the room versus the new code, which would alleviate that problem. We're also looking at air conditioning the space, so that's an added cost. And that obviously depends on the weather, how many air conditioning days there are in the year, how cold it is in the winter. So we can model it, but to give you an exact projection is pretty difficult. What, to be honest, what I hope we're going to be, end up doing is with the, all the energy efficiency uh, upgrades that we put in is to break even or better. Um, if you look at bringing in air conditioning, bringing in more fresh air and all the different things we're going to do, I think that's kind of the goal. One of the areas that we probably saved the most in, um, and the reason why I use that statement is, um, prior to the bond and after the bond, Montrose is much smaller. So our electric in our line item was like a hundred and some thousand dollars. And that, that very next year, I mean, we saw a saving that was about 30,000 right off the get go, just by changing the electrical. Um, I'm yep, a little- Actually the uh, energy credits too. We were able to go yep. to DT energy, actually consumers energy up there and get about $80,000 worth of credits just by changing light fixtures changing temperature controls, that money went right into the general fund too. Um, you know, all the different energy mechanical and electrical changes that we made, we got credits back from DTE for going green and put that money right to good use in the general fund. In fact, I'm sure. And I'm more quickly. optimistic than this guy. Matter of fact, we're gonna budget less money and this thing rolls and make him get it for us. So <laughs> I will save some dollars, I, I'm positive. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, we, oh, one other one. Yep, go ahead, sir. I just wonder if you could reiterate again, I, I know a lot of people have asked me about the uh, possibility of building a new high school instead of this program. I, I, I never realized myself it would cost the 70 million you've quoted, because um, people have said, and, and myself, it sounds like a plausible plan, move the elementary kids into the junior high, shift the junior high kids down here, and build a new high school. But you're saying this would be about a $70 million yeah. investment. So it depends yeah. as far as the actual, I mean, you can build a new high school depending on how many kids it's going to house for $50 million, or you could spend $110 million like Celine did a few years ago. Um, there's a pretty wide range in there depending on how nice and how many kids and the different bells and whistles and functionality to it. Um, we did, we talked we about talked. that at one time. 
Um, we just thought after walking the elementaries and seeing some of the deficiencies there, look going through Monroe Road and seeing how that space functioned, walking through the fact that half of this building is new already um, and the way you guys have your grades configured, we thought this was the best plan uh, for the most cost effective use of the community's dollars that we could come up with. Just so the, the public knows though, you, you thought of that. Absolutely. Yes. You thought yeah. of that idea. We thought yeah. about probably 10 or 12 different yeah. ideas of the how other we could one, configure things. And I'm glad, again, a great question. That's why these questions are good. Um, the other piece that we thought about, the way that um, someone said, why don't you just build a mega elementary, put it back here behind this area and you know, take care of all of the elementary issues. And really what they say, the research says about education and what kids need, they really need, especially at the younger level, smaller, more, th the way the elementaries are structured now, more community-based or, you know, area-based, smaller elementaries. They find that kids get lost in those things. The other consideration was putting elementary kids in the junior high with a double-decker and having kids go up and down those those stairwells um, probably wouldn't uh, bode well for little ones. And so we considered that. That's a good point, I know. <laughs> and I'm laughing because I, I went to a Catholic school. It was two stories, and we walked it, it, it you know, for eight years. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, you, I think you survived it. Yeah. You, and survived yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But, you I know, just, a lot of people ask that, and I think yeah. a lot of it has to do with the modern technology. The kids that would benefit the most from modern technology are going to be the high school kids, mm -hmm. the vocational programs that employers are constantly asking for you know and I, I guess I, I, I myself I, I didn't think it would be that much yeah, of a difference in price. They are quite expensive and it, it, a lot of it's because of what you just said. We didn't go down here but again if you if you got a free day and you want to see our CTE programs um, we can go down this hallway we've got I was in there today as a matter of fact they're doing they're building some cabinetry and it's beautiful um, but uh, that's where Mickey where these guys are the radio program um, but we could go down there and look at them, you're exactly right, but to duplicate, to replicate, to, to rebuild, very expensive to, to do that. I, I believe that we can, and especially that infrastructure technology piece, that uh, we can bring this high school, I, I think when we're all said and done that people will walk in here and they'll be very proud to say that this is our high school. So. And I think that's a that's something that you ought to really stress because I okay. think a lot of people are concerned about that. Okay, that and is a lot, great. And somebody mentioned it earlier, they don't want to pass something that their kids aren't going to benefit from. Yep. And I don't blame some of those parents. Yep. Actually, so, yeah. one of the things about this bond that makes it a little bit unique is that it literally is going to touch every kid in this district, from athletics to fine arts to the classrooms, building by building by building. There is something in this bond for every kid in the district. and not just for year one, but for year 10 and year 20 and year 30. So the board looked really hard at how um, that investment in the community would pay off over time and what made the most sense for, for the dollars. I know they, they questioned me on that quite a bit and, and had that at the front of their minds. So um, I, I think this proposal that's on the ballot is the best proposal for this district uh, for this time. So. Great, great point. And I certainly would take you up if you want to Come in someday, just call my office so we can buzz down or? <laughs> my, my wife actually taught, taught here for 30 years. Oh, so you've already been there. <laughs> you've already I'm been there. The Very good. Thank you, though. Okay, anything else? Yep. Um, I spent about 30 years of my career working on projects of this nature, not schools, but industrial facilities and whatnot. And I guess I'm... I ask myself, has this been studied enough? Uh, that $15,000 represents about two one-hundredths of a percent of the project. And I know in, in other projects that I've been involved in, uh, we did a lot more front end. And we did a lot more stack ranking of wants versus needs and come up with, with uh, uh, you know, the most viable arrangement we can even though maybe not everyone's happy with it um, and I, I'm just telling you that I, I feel some discomfort with that okay. and I don't know whether you've got something that could make me a little more comfortable or not other than um, I can just tell you from my experience that plan is one of the plant ran I mean I, I've just found and that's why I asked them to come to do this facility study to prepare for what I thought was going to be a sinking fund election Right, I mean, that's where this whole thing started. And 
Um, I've just been totally impressed by not just the, the, the work, but also the work, you know, the pre-work, but the planning and the seeing the project through that plant provides school districts. And not just from my own experience, although that's what I go on, but if you talk to other school districts, um, you certainly would find that. But I'm, I'm not going to find an <coughs> answer to the question about more time to study and more. Well, actually, just to, to build on that, so when we did the original assessment of the district, we did put things into four different categories. We looked at what are the annual maintenance costs that you'd have to deal with? What are the critical needs of the district? Things that had to be done in the first two or three years. Uh, we looked at deferred maintenance, which was more of like a four to six year category, and then property enhancements, which was seven to 10. So we broke every single line item down into one of those categories when we originally walked the building. Now, once we decided, to, uh, the board decided to go for a bond, and we started talking about maybe we should build a new elementary versus renovating two existing ones, some of those things changed a little bit. But there are certainly things that were on that uh, property enhancement list that are no longer part of the bond that just got put off to the side because it drove the dollars up too high. Like I mentioned about the auditorium, mm -hmm. building a brand new auditorium is something that would be great and is probably the, the best solution out there, but it also comes with a pretty hefty price tag. So that's something that we decided not to do. Um, and then one other thing, just, just so you know, so Plant Moran Crest, the firm that I work with, we manage about a billion dollars worth of construction at any one time. As I mentioned, from the Detroit Medical Center, which is a $500 million project, to Livonia, which is $200 million, down to we're managing Woodhaven Sinking Fund, Woodhaven Brownstown Schools, up 75 here. They're spending a million dollars a year. We're helping them manage that as well. So we do a lot of different projects. We've got architects, engineers, CPAs, attorneys on staff. We're, we're about 50 people right now, and we, that's all we do is manage construction projects for clients just like yourselves who only pass a bond every 20 years or every 30 years that don't have the in-house expertise to run a project this, of this size. That's all we do uh, five, six, seven days a week. So rest assured we know exactly what we're doing. Okay, okay very good. Okay, anything else? We've taken far too much of your time this evening. I appreciate your patience. Everyone thank have you. a great day and thank you. Our next uh, tour is MRE next Tuesday. <laughs>